What's going on, everybody? We're here. It's fight week. Uh, we're at the start in Frisco on location right now. Uh, it's going down, man. Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas this Saturday at the star in Frisco. Tickets are still available right now at Seek SeatGeek.com. And right now, I got my guest in the building. Oh, the whole building, actually. <laughs> Mikey Garcia, how are you feeling, man? Hey, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I feel good. Feel good. Feel good. Feel excited for, for Saturday night. Man, I'm excited. Well, before we go any further, I have a story that I have to share. And my man can tell it a little bit better than I can. But uh, he had a spinal cord injury a few years ago. He uh, reached out to a lot of people to post his GoFundMe link. And not a lot of people replied, but you happen to be one of them. Hey. Yeah. And so he wanted to so say I just some wanted to, to tell you, uh, I appreciate that. You know, uh, you don't know me. I don't know you outside of boxing. You know what Very I mean? Sure. So I just wanted to tell you personally, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, to repost that. Uh, man, you're welcome. Means, you're welcome. It means a lot, man. It just shows your character, you know, inside and outside the ring, a true champion, man. So I just wanted to tell you personally, and, thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate all the love and support, you yes, know. And, and you know, if, if if you know something that like that, you know, if I could have helped in it, I'm there for you know. For sure. Oh, okay. Much love, Mikey. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Man, so, man, we really appreciate it. We love you, Mikey. Now, let's get to the business. <laughs> this Saturday, you versus Jesse Vargas, the star in Frisco. What can the fans expect this weekend? I oh, mean, you're going you're gonna to see fireworks. Uh, you know, uh, both styles match up greatly. I think, uh, you know, everybody knows Jesse for being a, a tough, you know, warrior um, who's always in it, you know, to win. Um you know, and, and just to, you know, give everybody a little bit of, you know, reminder, you know, his, his only loss came to Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley. Yeah. And he had Bradley pretty much out in those last 15 seconds of their fight. So controversial, at, you know, in the end. So Jesse's a tough fighter, t tough warrior. He's, he's here to uh, win. And, and that's what's going to make this fight such a great f fight. Well, you know, I think uh, coming off of the last fight that you had against Spence, um, you know, I think you feel, I'm sure you feel like you have something to prove this time around, you know, and I think, you know, You've always been a guy that's always coming to the ring with something to prove, in my opinion. But is this fight different in terms of just, you know, reasserting yourself at 47? Because Look, obviously, I I, um, I feel that um, you know this fight allows me to answer a lot of those questions. You know that, that people have a lot of people question whether I have any business at, at welterweight at 147. You know, based on my last performance, you know, I it was a horrible performance, a horrible night for me. So it's it's hard to, to you know, sell the, the fans the idea that I can be a contender at 47. But uh, it was only one performance, and it was against the best, you know, welterweight in, in, in the moment. You know, Errol Spence fought a great fight, and, you know, it was just not my night. It was, it's just one of those things where I just couldn't perform. So I, I think this matchup on Saturday night against Jesse Vargas allows me to answer all that. There's a lot more to Mikey Garcia, even at 147. Man, we're excited about the fight. And this is actually your third time headlining a card in DFW, correct? Uh, yeah, we've been here uh, for, for world title fights. Uh, we did the, the back in 2013 when we fought uh, Lopez. We fought uh, in 2013, we fought Juan Man Lopez. And then we did the fight uh, Spence. Errol Spence in the last last year in, in March. And now we're headlining this one Saturday night. I think it's safe to say DFW is your second home <laughs> now, man. Yeah, you know, I, mean, uh, I don't know if the Cowboys are your team, but I'm yeah, hoping. Cowboys are my team. They, oh, they are. So, man. You know, that, that's why we keep coming back and working with the Cowboys. We, <laughs> Go love, we, love, Mikey. we love the boys. <laughs> Go Mikey. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, I know you also have your promotional company, Garcia Promotions. Yes, yes. You guys are putting on a fight this Friday in Irving as well, correct? Yes, yes. We got a show, a uh, stacked card. I think it's eight fights in total. Um, some of the local guys that we have here from the Dallas area, Fort Worth area, and also some of my guys from back home from California are coming out uh, to, to compete and fight this, this Friday night. It'll be at the uh, Southern Junction nightclub in uh, Irving, Texas. Yeah, you, you've, had actually ha you've actually had a few fights out here yes. now. Uh, what is it about DFW that, that you love so much? And, and uh, we'll get to, you know, how much the people here love you, but what is it about DFW? Well, it's, 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 it's the reason, you know, that they show all the fans show me so much love and support. You know, every time we come out here for one of my fights, you know, the the, the, the crowd and, and everybody, you know, like I said, uh, opens their arms to me. So, you know, there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of fighters here. And if I can, you know, in a way, come back, interact, give a little something of my time to give the opportunity to those young fighters to, to develop their career, develop as professionals, you know, then that's that's what I'm, I'm here for. And we did, uh, I think we did three shows last year here in, in, in uh, Dallas. Uh, and well, we're doing this one Friday night. You know, like I said, I just it's just an opportunity to give my fans and and the local talent an opportunity to develop as a professional. Well, you know, you got a lot of fans out here, and uh, to revisit the Spence fight for one second, you know, um, I remember being there at the press conference, and you know, the night of the fight, 
you guys did 44,000 people, I believe. It was like 40,000 people. It was a lot of people. But the majority of the people that were there, in my opinion, were there for you. And I felt it was a little, you know, I feel like you didn't get the credit you deserve for being the draw of that fight. No disrespect to Spence. We love him. You know, he's a hometown boy and uh, we're fans of his. But at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to the, the actual drawing power of that fight, uh, do you feel that you got the credit you deserved in terms of those tickets being sold and those people being in the building? Because there was a lot of Mexican flags <laughs> yeah, in the building. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah look, um, you know, going back to that night, you know, I didn't even get a chance to really soak in, you know, the, the whole atmosphere and, and, and the whole energy for, from that night. Uh, AT&T Stadium was, was packed. It was, it was amazing. But I didn't get a chance to really, like, look around and, you know, realize that, that what we had just done. You know, I, I think uh, final figures came in, like, at 47,000 or something Ooh. like that. Um, I know a lot of the fans that were in attendance were there supporting me just based on, on T-shirt sales, on flags, on, you know, demographics like that. You can just see the sales and then where they're coming from. So um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really mind if, if, if the credit is not quite given or if the media is not quite saying that it was me who made the bigger draw or, or had the bigger draw. I just know that my fans are there to support me, and every time I come out here, I get fans, you know, showing up right. and selling it out. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, well, no, definitely. It's just, you know, I guess just through conversations and, you know, different, different, you know, barbershop conversations we'll have, and, you know, I'll talk to people about people like Floyd, for example, who, you know, we're big fans of as well, but, you know, he's gotten a lot of credit for selling all these tickets, but he's never really sold over a million without a Latino. And the Mexican, uh, you know, he's done three fights, but one of them was like a sideshow or whatever. Uh, you had Shane Mosley and Manny Pacquiao, who we consider a fighter that the Mexican fight fans adopted, you know, yeah. because he fought so many yeah. Mexican uh, fighters. But the reason I mention that is because for me to you, it's like um, Mexican fight fans support in a way that no other base does. That's true. And I feel that you, you're, you know, people have gotten behind Mikey and and they support you wholeheartedly and I think that's why we're gonna see uh, another big event you know this weekend and it's all you man and you know you and Vargas credit to, to the, the fight card is amazing so yeah thanks thanks I, I feel that that you know the, the fight fans you know, in general are, are excited to just see this fight Saturday night with me and, and Vargas because they can see that the styles match perfectly you know like I said he comes into fight he comes he's a warrior and and you know I'm proving myself against you know bigger men and welterweight so i think that's 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 exciting um but yeah i mean the fans always always support me and, and you know no matter where i go you know we get you know crowds coming in and i i just i love that you know and i that's why i keep challenging myself and i keep going after big fights because, because of the fans you know if the fans want to see me fight these type of fights then that's what i'm gonna give them absolutely well with that being said i mean you know we don't want to look uh, ahead past this fight but obviously you know you've been getting called out by a lot of these guys you know what i mean and uh, my man at right here <laughs> he happens to be team Gar uh, danny garcia team dsg yeah and, and danny just recently called you out so i mean you know what do you yeah i mean what are, what are the chances we see that I'm, i saw some reports sometime in the past saying that there was a fight contract out there or, or what's going on with that uh, we were uh last year we were approached or at least i was approached um, it was probably sometime like in May, early May, you know, if I would consider a fight with uh, Danny. Yeah. I said, for sure, let's 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 do that. So actually, I went up to uh, Northern Cali right away to snack uh, to uh, get my training going. Right. Um, but then the, the fight never, never happened. Uh, I'm not sure why. I mean, I've heard, you know, different stories. So I, I can't cl make claims. Yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, it just didn't happen. But I'm definitely interested in a fight with, with Danny. I think the fans would really enjoy that fight. I think, I think it'd be a great fight. Yeah, it, it, it's a great matchup. He's he's been champion, you know, in in two divisions. He's big, solid, you know, guy that all the credentials there. Yeah. So I think I think the fans would really enjoy it. I mean, if everything goes well this Saturday night, that could be a, a strong possibility fight, for, yeah. for for the future. Yeah, I think I think that'd be a good fight. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely thinking that's gonna be a, a fight that needs to be made down the line if everything goes according to plan this weekend. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to ask? I know you had a few other questions real quick, right? Um, just some pop questions we can ask a little, a little later. Okay, so yeah. I just wanted to make sure real yeah, quick. Yeah. No, so, you know, going back to the business, um, you know, I think right now we, we recently had Virgil Ortiz on the show. Yes. He's a hometown boy. Uh, yes. We just launched a show, and he was talking about how, you know, he, he got a sparring in uh, with you. He credits you to making him a better fighter. I just wanted to touch on Virg and uh, the things that you're seeing him do in the gym and, uh, you know how you feel about his future. Uh, Virgil, Virgil's uh, solid. You know he, he he's got all the all the 
elements uh, that you need to see in a in a world champion. You know, he's got the the attitude, he's got the mindset, he's got you know the work ethic. You know, so that's already a you know solid foundation right there. But then you go into the skills, speed. He's got the the footwork. He's got the defense. He's got the strength. You know, body strength. You know, punching power. He's got all that already. Also, naturally, you yeah. know, he's naturally gifted like that. So now with with my brother, you know, training, you know, polishing him up, reminding him to do certain things. You know, that's that's even better. That's just making him even better. And then getting the sparring with the guys that we have, including myself. Yeah. You know, you got guys like Josito Lopez, myself. You got Chino. You got all these guys. You know, it's it's, it's unbelievable work that he's getting. So he doesn't need 30-plus fights, you know, to gain experience. He's learning a lot just from sparring, you know, and sparring guys like myself who are very experienced. Josito Lopez, very experienced. You know, he picks up on that. And so I, I think he's going to be world champion, you know, in, in, in a matter of fights, you know, real Real, real, real soon. Man, we're excited to see it. You know, uh, now I wanted to touch on your promotional status right now. I know that you're, you're, you're doing this one-off deal with The Zone. I think they have rights to your next fight as well. Do you plan to kind of just continue to go forward uh, as, you know, your own promoter? Well, it's it's worked well for me. You know, it's, yeah. it's worked well. I've, I've established relationships with uh, several entities, uh, whether it's networks and uh, also uh, other promoters or, or managers in, in the game, and it's worked well for me. Uh, this fight on Saturday night is a one-off fight with uh, Matchroom and DAZN, um, but we have uh, possibilities. We leave the, the, the possibilities open to, to explore, you know, anything else after that. Um, there, there's been, you know, some some uh, uh, notes out there that, that they have rights, like you mentioned. You know, I think you have a right to the next to, fight. To match the offer, not, right? Not, not quite as easy as people think it is. There's a lot more behind it, and... What I'll say is that it leaves me still flexibility in a lot of ways. You know, look at different opponents, look at different uh, options, um, and also look at other offers. You know, it still leaves me in charge of, of what's next. So in the end, it's still my call, um, but I'm allowing them to also be be involved. That's that's the, the easiest way to put it out there. Well, you know what? I think they're doing a sensational job with this promotion. Uh, I would love to see some of those fighters that we mentioned, some of the, the possible fights out there come over to this this side. You know, uh, you know, there's so much talk of this side of the street, that side of the street. So for you to be in control of your destiny, I think that's awesome. I think, I think it's 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 uh, I'm very fortunate to be where I am, uh, where I can, you know, make make certain uh uh, relationships open up you know certain doors for me and and keep working the way i've been working you know with one promoter or another or different networks and and still keeps the relationships available you know um and uh i, I do like the way uh matchroom has been uh promoting i do like the way they've been transparent that was one of the things that i asked you know that we need to be transparent we have to be involved you know i i, I gotta be as a co-promoter uh you know i gotta be involved i gotta know what's going on and they have been. They've been very good at the zone. Same thing. So that leaves me comfortable to continue work with them. So if things go well and there's a good opportunity that they can either, like you mentioned, you know, maybe bring some of the other guys from the other side of the street over and stuff like that. You know, I, I would love to fight all the, anybody. You know, no matter who it is or where it's at. You know, I'm just here to fight. Um, and if it happens to be available through through the zone and match room, and they can, you know, pull them over this way, then then I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Man, speaking of the zone, right? Uh, I think well, it was actually Matchroom. They did the life of uh, Mikey Garcia, and at, you were seeing the car collection. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna tell you when I come to Cal, I'm bring some hand control so I can borrow one of the Lambos, man. You got a sweet car collection, bro. Hey, thanks, thanks. Yeah, man, which was your favorite though? Nah, I mean, <laughs> look, I, I appreciate and, and I like each one for for its uniqueness and for its own personal. You know, it's it's, it's hard to explain. Um, I mean, it's I, I don't have a, a one favorite, but if if I had to choose, you know, which one's still like my own favorite, probably my 2010 Challenger SRT. Um, really? I built that. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't build it. I mean, I sent it out to Richard Petty's garage. It's all built by Richard Petty. Wow. Garage serial number. Like it's it's a unique one of yeah. one build. So it, it doesn't look like much, but that 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 motherfucker, it's got some power. <laughs> it's, it's probably uh, the most difficult to drive actually, uh, because of all the power and yeah. all the stuff that it's got. But do you yeah. have names for your cars? Nah, nah. Like Lucille. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I, I don't. I don't have. I didn't name one, but um, you know, it just it starts off like you know when you're a little kid. You know, you see the little Hot Wheels, or right. you just you know you see the movies and you see cars. I mean, I could have bought a lot of the st stuff you know early in my career, but I I I didn't. So now that I'm, I feel that I can actually afford it. And yeah, I mean now 
I mean, now I've, I've treated myself also. You know, you got yeah. to treat yourself once in a while. Absolutely. You know, when we go back to those uh, those two years of inactivity, whenever you were having your promotional differences with uh, with Bob Aram and Top Rank, I believe, um, do you look at that as like, not so much a blessing in disguise, but it really kind of educated you on the, the business side of boxing? It did. It did educate me. That, that's kind of a, the way I see it now. You know, during the time, it was difficult at times. Uh, you're not making money. You know, you got to try to make, make money out, outside of the ring. Um, it was two and a half years, you know, out of the ring. So it was, it was a long process. And it was right, in, like what someone would say, in my prime. I was 26. I was just yeah. about to break through, you know, be become, you know, a big star. And I was I was put on the, on the shelf. But, um, you know, you, 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 I made it through. But now looking back, you know, I also learned a lot during that time. You know, I learned a lot about the business. I learned the, the way a lot of the revenue streams are generated and who handles what and what's you know appointed for a certain reason and the expenses of a show and how much money is really brought in how much is yours to keep how much you know i learned a lot of stuff that had i not gone through that i probably wouldn't have learned yeah. so it's almost like an investment you know I, I took two year and a half years off but i invested that time into the the boxing sport the the, the uh, business of the sport and the school of boxing yeah, business that, right? it's it's paying, it, it paid off it, it's really paid off yeah because i think a lot of times uh people in the general public they'll see that the fighter will make a certain person they think that's all takeaway oh no no oh, no man. look look <laughs> really quick you know on average every fighter's paying about you know 30 percent of their purse just to their team and then management and whatnot i i sometimes you're paying up to 40 percent. i was actually paying 40 percent at the time uh just to my team and then you know with expenses so you get a million dollar purse you know you're gonna have to pay that off right yeah. away so you're left with six and even after that you still got to pay your taxes another 40 yep. percent yeah you know that's another Man. 240 so out of the out of the mill that <laughs> that they claim you they know you, out made, there, yeah. you know you're not taking anywhere near that you know you're lucky to bring home three hundred thousand dollars you know free and clear yeah you know, that's that's just the way it is uh so i mean it's still a lot of money but i mean it's not what it seems yeah, yeah. it's not like oh you know he's banking like that you no, know so no. that's why his nickname wasn't big money mikey <laughs> 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 now he's big money mikey uh quick hits man i want to ask a few different questions man Workout yeah, before, music. hey before we get into uh, that uh, before uh, we get into that what did you think about the uh wilder fury fight i was i was surprised yeah you know, i i didn't expect uh fury to be so dominant and to come off so strong early in the fight, yeah. I expect him to try to box and then maybe use his height and yeah. reach, you know, a weird, you know, style like that. Um, I I thought Wilder would have came in a lot stronger and just, you know, start hurting him early on. Well, his costume was weighing him down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think he got tired just walking yeah. in the in, yeah. into into the ring. No, so, I mean Wilder just wasn't able to do anything, you know, Fury. All, all credit to Fury because he came in and and really, you know, did I what think he that said. shot really hurt him though behind the ear. Yeah, in the it, ear. The, the first the first knockdown, yeah. it was it was a little you know behind the ear, and I think that really did bother him because after that he didn't have no balance. Yeah, he, really, he, was, he was he was having a hard time just standing up. Yeah, you know, and it was only the third fourth round when when you could just see that he didn't have no legs and. It's not like he was, you know, deep in in, in uh, the fight to be tired, tired at that like point. That, yeah. So it was it was it was the the balance. I'm sure that that disrupted his his balance also. But uh, you know, Fury, like I said, he came to win. You know what, man? I don't know if you've ever thought of, about what you're gonna do post a fighting career, but you'd make an amazing commentator. I, I've I've been told that. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I, I'm listening to you and the knowledge you have. It I think you'd do great. I mean, I, I've done it a few times. You know, little little uh, guest. Uh, you know, behind the mic a few times, different networks and whatnot, and everybody tells me, you know, hey, you got another career in, in, in commentating after the sport, so hey, may, maybe I do that. The zone, probably, the zone, do you hear that? Do you hear that? <laughs> better, better than getting hit in the face all night, you know? <laughs> I'll be behind the mic. Yo, you so I had, I had a, a, a few quick hits I wanted to ask you. Workout music, who who do you like to listen to in the gym that gets you pumped up? Well, I, I stick to my banda Norteño and Corridos. <laughs> I, like, I like Tito Torbellino, uh, Alfredo Olivas, um, Juan Sebastian, you know, a little, a little older school. They're my favorite. Uh, I mean, just, just the, the, the traditional, you know, Carlos y Jose. That's your Mikey Garcia playlist uh, right there. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> favorite boxing movie? Oh, it's it's, it's got to be between either The Fighter or Cinderella Man. Those, those two are the best Pri ones. Price of Glory? That was a good one. Yeah, that's Price of Glory. That's a good. That's, that's a, that's a, a sleeper. Yeah. That's a sleeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a sleeper. That's, that's, that's a really good. We were just talking about that with my nephew. That's my nephew's uh, Pita. That, yeah. That's his favorite. And we're talking about that. That's that's actually a really good movie. It slept on, man. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it slept on because because people didn't it, it didn't have the the the, the promotion behind it yeah. and get the big you know like like like, like, like you know over a fighter or yeah, like Southpaw or, South or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but Price of Glory is a very good movie. It's a great movie. Fantasy matchup. 
any two fighters you could see in the ring, who would it be? Uh, Floyd, first one right away. Floyd, I would have loved to get in the ring with him and just to see how good he really was, man. Um, he came to see me train one time. Um, right when I was about to uh, end my, my layoff and I was about to you know resume my career, he came to, to the gym, uh, watched me spar, and before I was in the ring, I was getting ready, and I asked him, hey, you want to get in the ring and really see how how uh, how it is, you know, how how good I can be? <laughs> and he says, nah, I'm retired. I'm like, come on, just, you know, <laughs> he says, nah. He fought Bertel, and I hit them up to see if they wanted some sparring. <laughs> He already had everything set up, so we never got to do it. But I, I would have loved to get in the ring, even just the sparring with him, just to see how good he really was. Who's your favorite fighter of all time? Uh, well, favorite would be Juan Manuel Marquez. Yeah, favorite, my favorite, Juan Manuel Marquez. I think he was, he was, he's a, you know, a great, great fighter, one of the best. I think he's probably the best out of Mexico. I think he's <laughs> tremendous. I, I would have loved to see him in Morales fight. That never happened, and I everybody, sure everybody would have loved that one, man. That, that would have been completely that. Completely that, 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 that little group of fighters, that little <laughs> tournament that they had going with yeah. Morales and Barrera and, and Manny and Marquez. You know, I think I think that would have been a great matchup. Um, never, never got to see that. I have a hypothetical question, though, man. I know this is like completely hypothetical. We're make believing here. It's fantasy. <laughs> you versus Robert at 130, 135. Who wins and who is your dad training? Oh man! Look, we actually—I got to spar my brother once when I was like 14 years old, 15 years old. Yeah, he still kicked my ass. <laughs> he, 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 he didn't, he didn't uh, hit me hard, but he just, he just, you know, all the experience and everything. I mean, if we would have fought, you know, like you said, you know, hypothetically here, fantasy, yeah, 130, 135. You know, he was a tremendous fighter. A lot of people that didn't really get to see him so much. He didn't have a long career. He retired at 26. You know, so he didn't have the the biggest you know career, and then you know it was it was one of those things where just his management and promotion didn't really help them at the time. So there was a lot more potential, a lot more that he could have done. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, he just you know his career was 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 too short. Um, it would have been a tough fight because you know Robert was a tough tough fighter, man, and just you know strong, experienced, a lot better than people were able to see. How many fights do you feel you have left? Oh man, I'm in my prime. I'm oh, happy. I'm excited. Him two years off, he's ready. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, anybody that asks me, you know, once in a while they ask me questions like this, and I remind them, look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 32 right now. Just I turned 32 this past December, um, but uh, I had two and a half years off. You're right. Right. So thirty, you know, I'm, I'm twenty and a half, yeah. in, you know, in boxing, and That's true. And, and, That's true. and a young, you know, twenty nine and a half, thirty year old, because I've never been really, you know, you've never been punished, up, yeah. punished, yeah, never been punished where, where my body's getting Good that much down. wear and tear, yeah. you know, hard knockdowns, hard knockouts like that really affect a, a, a fighter, and I haven't, you know, had that. So I'm a I'm a young twenty nine year old, you know. Right. So I feel I feel I'm like you know twenty seven year old right now. And you've only you've only lost one time professionally. Yeah, so just just the one. And it's like for whatever reason in boxing, it's like you get a loss on your record, and it's like the end of the world. Yeah, uh, it's, it's 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 uh, easy for for others to uh, make a, you know judgments right away. But man, that that's that's not the way it is. I mean, some fighters, depending on how you lose, you know, it could affect you, you know, for for your future, you know, and, and career. But. I mean, not for me. You're gonna see Saturday night. You're gonna see a great performance out of me, and and everybody's gonna be happy to see me back, and just know that I, I could be something much bigger than what they saw. You know, we need to see you uh, walk out with some uh, Dallas Cowboys inspired trucks, man. That would be really awesome, man. Yeah, you know what? We, we've we've thought about all that, but I just didn't want to be like, oh, he just a, you know sell out around. Right yeah. I do support the team. I, I've I've been to the games. We watch them. You know, I've been around uh, training camp out there in Oxnard. That's where my original home is from. You know, in Oxnard. So whenever they're out there in training, you know, we show up. I mean, we are fans, but like I said, I just feel like I other fans, <laughs> other people that don't know that I'm actually a fan yeah. would just be like, ah, he's just trying to fucking, you know, sell out or something. Because <laughs> he's there, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's not the way it is, you know. We're, we're fans for, for real. No, man, you know, and the community is behind you guys, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's it's awesome to, to have your fights here. 
Uh, we definitely look forward to your fight versus Jesse Vargas. Before we wrap up, I wanted to tell you that I did go on Anstreet.com before uh, the interview, and uh, I found out that me and you are long lost cousins. You know, we're both really? from Chicago. Oh, <laughs> no, just, oh, but you're from Chicago too. Yeah, my family's All from right. Chicago. So, okay. So uh, this is my primo, Mikey Garcia. <laughs> hey. uh, you know, Rick side tickets for life, uh, and we look forward to the fight this weekend, man. It's gonna be awesome. Y'all make sure to check it out yes, on the zone. If you don't got the zone, download the app. Uh, and Mikey, what are, any parting words for your fans? Oh, man, just uh, I want to thank everybody for all the support, you know, all the love and support. You know, we're here to uh, do it one more time Saturday night, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a memorable night, and there's lots more to to, uh, to give you guys out of Mikey Garcia. You got to do me a huge favor. Please do not let this be the last time you, you fight here. Oh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll definitely be coming back. It, like like you mentioned, it's almost like a second home for me. You know, it's 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 uh, so nice to be here and be treated, you know, with like I said, with open arms every single time. So we'll definitely be, be, be back here. Yeah, I mean, I think Jerry Jones. I see the photos of you and Jerry. You hey, know what I'm He's all the way yeah, in. They love, they love Mikey here, man. They love yeah. you here. Yeah, bro. man, absolutely. We love you, Mikey. And uh, we look forward to the fight, man. And uh, again, you know, uh, best of luck. And we look forward to, yes, uh, to seeing what the future holds Thank for you. Mikey Garcia. Thank you. I appreciate you yes, guys. Sir. Appreciate you.